Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. Today you're going to come on a journey with us where we talk about two uh, fabulous courier machines that are installed here at Manufax. So Paul, this machine is absolutely huge, like my arm, you can just see by my arm Even how big go -go it is. Gadget. Yeah, I know, I can't go. But tell me about why manuf Manufact have bought this machine, what is it being used for? Installed in 2002 this machine, um, really for those sort of multi-faced parts or when you're looking to do larger components and get to lots of areas on those parts that you may have to move around a machine shop to achieve because this machine has got a two axis head on it. You'll be able to see here, this has got a C and a B axis on the head, which means you can do sort of full five axis positioning and simultaneous machining as well on much larger parts. Yeah, definitely. And you can see the parts, well, we, well, you can't really see the parts on here, but from my eye, they're doing really nice cutting strategies on it, flooding it with coolant. So must be finishing parts. So roughing somewhere else and then bringing it in here to make it all nice and fancy. And that's really the two machines that we're looking at in today's show. This is the one that's doing a lot of the, the, the finishing work, whereas the Axia machine that, that we see is doing heavy duty roughing, but both combine to work perfectly with each other. What I like about these machines is the, is the access to them, but is the fact that you've got such a big X and a big Y. There's no restriction. Sometimes you look at smaller machines with big X axis, but yet you're restricted in the Y. Here you're not. And wherever that, wherever that bridge moves, you know you've got the ultimate in sort of positioning rigidity. And that's the thing. With a huge machine like this anyway, it's actually really, really delicate, which is a really nice side to see of engineering. Yeah, because some of the parts they're making here for the aerospace industry, all, ki all kinds of sectors, you can see quite, quite a lot of rugged frames and castings, yet then you can see rings that really demand the most precise of machining operations. And, you know, they can be quite small, but they've still put them on here. And that's the thing. They can do small um, batches of uh, parts, but they can do huge batches of parts. We could fit the MTD van on this table, or we could have lots of little parts on the table, which is really nice to show. So what does Manufact make of these machines? Well, they absolutely love Coria. And in a minute, we're going to look at the Axia machines. They love Coria to bits. They've got nine of them here on their site. They operate here out of a, I think it's a six acre. It's a huge six facility. Six acre area, nine courier machines, um, an assembly area. They've got turning centers. They've got, they really are what I would class as a, as a one stop shop for manufacturing. The further north we move, the heavier the engineering, which is what we're witnessing today. The dirtier, the heavier, the more nitty gritty. And the one thing about Manufact is as well, they're not just button pushers, which is one thing I really like to see is the apprentices moving up um, through the industry, learning off the tool makers. And for them to be able to program something like this, they're using Hyde 9 as well, aren't they? They are on both their machines and it's a, it's, it's a control that they're very familiar with and they love. So, so this, is the, this is the big one that does the, uh, the finishing. So David, I want to get your take on um, the two differences or well, the differences between this machine and, and the larger five axis that myself and Chloe have been looking at. Could you maybe give us a quick overview? Yeah, well, this machine has got an extra three meters, so we've got eight meters of travel here, five meters on the other one. We've got the UAD head, as opposed to the synchronous head over there, and I can take a lot heavier cut with this machine than I can with that, the other five axis. What do you put that down to? Why can you do much more demanding work? two things. Uh, first of all is the box-in-box -box construction of the machine here and also the hearth coupling on the head. Whereas on the other machine over there we have the full five axis head on it. It cannot lock off and hold a cut the same as this can. 30 seconds on Manufax. We've been around since 1949 here on this site in Stockport. We're uh, subcontract engineers. We now do design and make. Uh, we do mainly for the aerospace industry but we will develop into all other areas now 
um, with in nuclear and pharmaceuticals. You've well. got some really impressive work here as well, though, haven't you? Some of the things we've looked at for the aerospace industry, a lot yeah. of skills. Yeah, there's a lot of skills. We've got a full team of tool makers as well as all the machinists in here, and we've got a metrology division as well. What's the largest um, project that would have come through here, do you think? Give us an idea, value, and also maybe the time it would take to come from, from start to finish. One of the biggest projects that we had has been for a blue chip aerospace company. It was to the value of seven and a half million, and it took just a little bit over 12 months to design, make, and install. So Paul, we stood in front of the head, basically. So talk to me about the box. What's all this about a box? Okay, box in box. So basically, this ram is one of the most, well, it is the stiffest construction you can get in a ram. And it's, it's, it's built like this in order to make sure that uh, in a lot of these style of machines, when you're machining, you can machine left to right, or le you can machine right, or you can machine left. What you want to be able to do is do heavy cuts in whichever direction you want. Now some machines you can't do that because just because of the way the head's built. So you have to do your heavy roughing if you're moving you know, in the x-axis in, in the right direction and, and lighter cutting coming the other way. With this Corian machine, it doesn't matter. The box in box, it's fully surrounded and fully supported. There's even like these, these wedge type supports which means that when the ram is extended, it's fixed and it's clamped and it's ready for heavy duty machining. So that's what I'm thinking about. Like in my head, thinking about it, the more it extends, the more it's going to tilt. And obviously, if you've got them heavy cuts, is it not going to shake and vibrate? No, absolutely not. And that's the, that's the beauty of this yeah. ram. I mean, it can, they can do, of course, but not on this particular yeah. machine. <laughs> they built it in order to be able to, um, to be machine out at the position you can see here extended to or right at the face of the column as well. That is a huge distance as well to be able to come out. And I know it goes further as well. So for this machine tool company to be able to develop this technology is fantastic because companies like this need this, this They do, this they feature. need the stability. Now this head, this is a UAD head, this is a multi-positioning head, it can get to hundreds of millions of positions thanks to their kind of unique patented hearth coupling design um, from Korea. The, the, real, the real beauty of that is the fact that you can get to so many different positions, okay, because if you... Yeah, there was like millions of positions or Millions like that. of positions. I can't exactly remember how many millions, but more millions than you would need, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's probably a good way to describe it. But the important point is, is that when you go from a position to another position and you want to come back to the original position, the accuracy that is maintained throughout the, the RAM and the head is, is, is second to none, which means you do not recut the part, which is really, really important. That's a huge advantage because I've been on machines before where I've wanted to go back to that position and it's just not the same position. So no. for them to have that for this is completely... And this, this is a perfect example of what Colin calls bird's nesting. Bird's nesting. Now, this is since he had his hair, or since he's had his hair cut, which he has now, um, oh, fantastic. He might need to replace it, and if he does, I think that this is a real good fit for Colin. Yeah, Wouldn't you agree? I, I thought it looked familiar from where yeah. I'd seen. So now that we've spoke about the head, where do we go to program this extreme bit of engineering? Let's go and have a look. Okay, I might be a while because I'm scared of heights and it's a bit. Bring your hair with you. See ya. So, Paul, I suppose this is like the cab or something. Cab, what like a taxi? Yeah, or a boat. I feel like I'm on a boat. This this is where this is where all the all the programming is done. This is a, a, a great place for an operator to get out of the machining area, be totally protected from any concerns of swarm. Any bombs, annoying people. Any just annoying stick people you can the shut cab. the door. Yeah. But you can be really comfortable in this environment and it's important with a machine like this because obviously you need to be able to see close to the cutting edge which you can but also be protected from the machining environment I think too. as well, being in an environment like this, you're part of the machine, you're controlling the machine basically, you're telling it what to do, you are part of the machine. So also you need to be 100% on with this machine. There's so much that could go wrong, you're cutting hard material. So tell me about some of the chaotic things that could happen with one of these machines. I, I think you've got, I think we, a lot of the things they do is they put a lot of fail safes in place these days. So you don't have many risks when you're, when you're machining. 
This area here that we talk about, you call it a cab. Of course, you've got you know a pit here where the and the slideways are on the base of the machine is, but you're fully protected from yeah. that. You're, you're not going to fall in there unless... Unless, <laughs> unless I throw myself unless over you, there. <laughs> unless you chose to. But also, you've got a lot of area here to be able to, to be comfortable, to be able to do even things like plan your programs, even have your tools on here, which Changing you see, your inserts. Changing your, tools, your inserts yeah. if you need to. So I think they've, put, they've paid a lot of attention. You've even got drawers and cabinets in there as well. And, of course, you've got the control almost right next to the cutting area and so that's an that's that's the beauty about it like i said earlier you're part of the machine that machine is not going to work without you being a hundred percent on it and in the game basically no and i used to work a machine like this and i've got to say it, it was it they were really they're big machines you feel really responsible and of course you are oh, yeah, with it machining scares parts me just like looking this. at it of the responsibility that someone has yeah. over a project that, that they're doing like this and you've got to achieve tolerance from one end to the other so the bigger the part gets this table might be eight meters, but you might have a tolerance of, you know, microns or thousands from one end to the other. And that's where you've got to start really making sure that this machine is set uh, and, 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 is, and is, you know, in, in a relative position to be able to perform those multi, um, multi-axis. And, yeah, and, and having parts. something like this, you've got to be comfortable. You've got to be on the game, comfortable. And having a little setup like this, being part of the machine, you're going to be moving as well, I suppose. Yeah, you don't want to be suffering with seasickness, do you? And what about the foundation? Well, look at this. This is where the machine sits. They dug a 30-foot pit here in order to be able to accommodate this machine. Something that DTS do very, very regularly. And something if I was investing in technology like this, I'd want to go to a company that knows what they're doing. This really is uh, some piece of engineering. So there we have it from us at MTD. That was Swarf and Chips in a location at Manufacture. If you enjoyed the show, please like and comment.